And now, brethren, I will cut my sermon at this point because we have special announcements. We have an additional, uh, an addition to the prophetic understanding that we're what we have been learning, and for that, our pastor general, Mr. Pack. Somebody's crying because I'm going to speak again. <laughs> I don't blame them. <laughs> he always says he's done. <clears throat> Thanks to Mr. Toro, who adjusted on the fly. Uh, and he, he understands rushing to call out his sermon now. Um, I wanted to quick mention a title that uh, is important to, to uh, be aware of. Um, just for coming coming down. I'm only going to go about 20 minutes or so, so we'll go a little bit over. But uh, the largest website in the world, most popular website in the world, has at the top of it the following title. Uh, end Times. 71% of Americans have no faith in government to prevent doomsday. So almost three quarters of Americans believe that we're in the end time and we're at the, we're at the time of doomsday. Uh, so <clears throat> that said, uh, recall what I said about discoveries and breakthroughs and kind of a war in the mind. There was one other thing that sort of was in the back of my mind, marinating and incubating, and I've been ruminating over it. And I sort of set it aside because I thought we had to have exactly a year. But let me, let me open with a question. And everybody ev everywhere will be able to hear this. What if the last great day is exactly one day off? Let me just go straight to the question. I would normally take more time to ex explain this. But what if every verse cited two days ago is just as correct after the last great day? What if other verses, certain verses, even fit better if we waited one more day? Now I'm going to go fast, literally rushing. I want to I want to move through certain certain points. Why don't you just set your pencils down, your pens, and uh, I'm not going to I'll turn to maybe one verse. But uh, those again who've been working closely with me know that I've been battling over the question of whether God would go all the way through the feast. You'll see some of the points here or whether he was going to mirror the last great day to start the year as he would in all years thereafter. Or were there certain verses indicating, no, he wasn't, he was going to skip that day because it was so important. Now, <clears throat> something simple to start, uh, the Bible plainly says that there are two different dates on the 21st. Haggai 2.1 says the 21st day of the feast, and then many, many other verses talk about the 24th, the 21st and the 24th. And I would look at that and I would see it's boundaried. There are two days in there. There are two days between the 21st and the 24th. How would we know which one it is? The 22nd and the 23rd are in there. How would I know? How would I know? So the 23rd is just as valid on that very simple point uh, to open as the 22nd. Now Habakkuk 2 and verse 3 says that this man rushes to call out. I didn't think I'd speak the last time, never mind this time, but he rushes to call out the vision and it's for a Moad. And then it says, at the end of this Moad, at its end he will speak, and I'm thinking the end of the seven days, the Moad is eight days long. The feast is eight days long. That's one of the great truths I've explained to the brethren. It, it could read the end of the seven days, or it could read the end of the eight days. The end of the year is technically after the seven days, but the end of the Moad could be at the end of eight days because the feast on all the brethren now understand is eight days long. The feast of tabernacles is seven. The last great day is the eighth day of the feast. It's the last day of the feast. So would it be you go one extra day? In other words, you go to the nearest part, the nearest part of the midst of the year is not dead on. There are other things that bothered me. 
a whole variety of them. This is one point, but I'll say it. God is saying to Israel right out of the gate, be strong and work, work. Now, would you say that to them on the last great day when it's a high holy day and, an, and a weekly Sabbath besides? Would you tell them, work, work? It says that various people came to work in God's temple, his house, his purpose. In uh, the, the first part of, of uh, Haggai, it's called the marvelous work and wonder from day one. Marvelous work and wonder, be strong and work. They came and worked. That does not sound like the last great day, but I was trying to make it match a year later. It also bothered me for a long time that God was going to have this magnificent giant altar, not a bunch of stones as in Ezra, but this giant altar, huge dimensions built on a high holy day built on a sabbath a weekly and an annual sabbath boy talk about work that wouldn't fit then i realized and i'd had this in the back of my mind oh many times wondering about this that god said when you build the altar then it's you build it on the first day classically that would mean the first day of the week then you go second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh day, and you would the week would follow not Saturday through Friday, but Sunday through Sabbath or Saturday. That's the natural way to read it, particularly if you're going to build this huge altar that will last for all time on a holy day. You wouldn't do that, but I, I wasn't sure. Further, in Isaiah 41, remember, verses 5 to 7, you want to jot it down, you can. It appears, the most natural way to read this, that 100 billion people are helping each other at work right away. That's the natural way it reads. Not after they kept the last great day. But they immediately come and they're helping each other as though it's a work day. It's a Sunday, not a Sabbath. The same with Ezekiel 33. I looked at it and I thought, now which is this? They're in the doors of their houses, the walls and doors of their houses right away. They're not at the feast. Why, are, why is, does God carefully depict them in Ezekiel 33, much like Isaiah 41, their home? Why? Why? I, again, I've been rushing so much to put all this together, I did not have sufficient time. Now, what's interesting is, if Christ comes on the eighth day, Elijah would cry out to the world, half of the world, half of the world would still be in the last great day. We would still be here in services just one day later. The last great day would be over in Jerusalem, but half the world's time zones are to the west of Jerusalem. It would not be over. So in one sense, half of the world would be in the seventh day of the Feast of Tabernacles if it were tomorrow instead of the Sabbath. And I went back and forth over this. In Isaiah 41, 25, it very carefully says, God says, I have raised this man in the north, he has arrived, but he shall come to Jerusalem. He shall arrive in Jerusalem at dawn. Like he raised him 12 hours earlier, Jerusalem time. But I don't live in Jerusalem. We're seven hours uh, west of Jerusalem. So many, most of God's people will still be in the last great day. Now, these are not things that just suddenly occurred to me last night, but they just lined up suddenly. Uh, they are things that Mr. Holcomb and Habush and Schleifer and various other men that I've been talking to uh, understood I was battling with and trying to figure out where they fit. God tells saints to pray in and through every season. Why would he say pray in and th through every season unless potentially we were going to pray through every one of the eight days of the Feast of Tabernacles? Here's another powerful point, and it's very powerful, and I'm going to warn the church right now. I'm going to give a very strong warning and a rebuke to people thinking of leaving. Hebrews 10.25 tells people 
to assemble so much the more as you see the day approaching. Don't stop assembling. This is equated with the will of God in verse 36. And vengeance on those who ignore it. Now, I want to tell a couple stories, and some of you may have your own stories, but after I finished two days ago, oh, how I wished I could have told these stories, and here I find myself able to do it. When my wife was called in 2000, she went to uh, the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, her, first, her first feast, she had been a PM for 11 days, and she started attending, actually for about four days, she started attending on the Day of Atonement. She's a brand new baby PM. And she goes to the feast, and on the last great day, having been attending, I guess, what would it be? Seven days plus five, so maybe 12 days. 12 days in the church, a p.m., and she watches two ladies in Canada packing their bags and putting them in the car dressed casually. Now, she was putting her, her bag in the car and dressed and went back into service. She said, oh, uh, are, are you leaving? And they said, uh, uh, yes, we want to beat the traffic. The will of God meant nothing to those two hypocrites. And my wife says, the brand new 12 day old PM says, she never told me this till, till uh, two days ago, says, but aren't we supposed to be here for the whole thing? <laughs> you just can't make that up. And she didn't. And they said, well, yeah, but we just want to beat the traffic. They were headed back through Toronto. God's will be hung, they didn't care. Now, immediately after that, a minister walked up to me and told me about how he'd been in the church a couple years, and he walked out of services uh, during uh, the, the um, he wasn't a minister yet, but he's a minister now, he's here, and he walked out of services and saw two people dressed casually on the last great day, not bringing bags with them, but dressed casually, and he went over and talked to them and found out they were going to go out and do sightseeing on the last great day. They weren't going home. They were just blowing off God. They were there and they were in their shorts and then, you know, it was in Florida, I think. Now, had he been a minister, I would have said to them, here's what I'd have said if I'd have been there. You are disfellowshipped immediately. You can do anything you want. You're out of the church and you will not ever be back. That's willful disobedience against God's law. You're gone now. Now, I told you I'm going to be strong. <clears throat> All eight days is the truest test. I've watched thousands and thousands of people blow off the opening night. Well, I don't feel like it. But you're to follow the traditions of God down through the decades. God says that there will, in the very next verse, the very next verse, it begins talking about after you don't assemble together in Hebrews 10, 25, God says there will be vengeance on those who don't. And I've taught that for most of my ministry. I, I began to realize, whoa, only I tied it to Sabbath observance as well. For if we sin willfully, after we receive a knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins. And the context is the will of God in assembling at the feast. You're done. You leave the feast, you're done. You may not even get home. I've often said, and this is what our ministers are instructed to do right now, starting right now. You ask people, do you believe sin is the transgression of the law? And it is a law that you keep the feast. It's a commanded holy convocation, commanded assembly, all of it. They say yes. Do you believe that if you sin willfully, after you've received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins? They say yes. Do you believe the wages of sin is death? Did you know that? And they say yes. And they say, I'm still leaving. They're finished. Don't even let them keep the rest of the feast. If you find that out today, expel them immediately. I warned the church a year ago, if there's anybody thinking like that, you're gone now if we can discern it. If you know of anybody who's going to leave the feast, tell us now so we can maybe save their life. Maybe warn them and save their life. If not, expel them. They're way more than out of the church. So if any still plan to leave, you left the church. 
You willfully disobeyed God a year after I warned of this. I'm glad I have the opportunity to stand up and speak like this. I'm sorry I have to, but maybe we'll save a few lives. Maybe there'll be some wives who fear God more than their husbands. God said, well, you stay for seven days, you live in tabernacles for seven days. Guess what? The eighth day you go home after it's over. You don't need to stay in a tabernacle the eighth night. Brethren can stay if they want to. It doesn't mean get to the first seven and then leave if you want. You can pack your bags. I did it many times. Almost every last great day I packed my bags, put them in the car, and went into services. <clears throat> All right, another point, Hosea 12 and verse 9. You'll yet keep the days of the solemn feast, Hosea wrote. The feast is eight days. It looks like they kept none of them. The fe Remember I explained two days ago, it's one feast of eight days. It's called one cog, one moad. Each day is a moad, yes, that's true. But the whole thing collectively is also called in multiple places one moad, like it's one unit made up of eight days. So it suggests in Hosea 12, 9, the most correct way to read it. Took me a while to put this together. I work about 12 to 14 hours every day, brethren, going over things. And, um, you know, I'll soon be 50. I wish I were old enough to enjoy the seniors activity tomorrow, but I'm just not there yet. But I do get a little tired and sometimes just checking all the various things that that uh, I have to go through, that the, the boxes that have to be checked. Uh, you know, I, I, my mind is literally a 24-hour-a-day Rolodex. Uh, I, I almost don't need a Bible. I just almost don't need a Bible because I'm going over these things so many times. If Israel misses trumpets and they miss the Day of Atonement, the first day of the seven, uh, the first seven days of the Feast of Tabernacles in the acceptable year, they could just as easily miss one more day. It doesn't defile God's plan. In fact, it may enhance it. They just would miss the last great day. Now, a point of math. Here's another point. I've wondered for weeks about the most correct way to read Colossians 2.16 and the shadow that Paul talked about. Remember the shadow. We've read it many, many times. I referenced it the other day. It most correctly describes a 22-day wait, a new moon holy day, and weeks not a 21 day wait and i had to it was it was a kind of an either or which is it which is it one plus 21 is 22 or if you count the new moon holy day within the first week you'd get to 21 and then the last great day would be when everything began but that's not technically the way paul put it he said you know it says sabbaths but it means it means uh weeks but it would be through three sabbaths So that's interesting. Go up to Jerusalem <clears throat> and all the verses in Isaiah 2 and 29 and Micah 4 and Zechariah 8 all speak of going up to Jerusalem. I've, I'd gone over and over this, but I went back one more time. Most correctly, the context of those verses is 100 billion people have a whole year to go do that. They have a whole year to do that. We've heard that God is with you at the end of Zechariah 8 to the Jews. I want to go to Jerusalem to seek the Lord. Is that a picture of, and it's in, it's in those days, is that a picture of get up there for the last great day or get up there sometime? You can't have 100 billion people come there in one day, but I thought, well, maybe some did or something. In fact, this verse hints that Sunday... God would be starting his work on the first day of the week, the way he did creation. Sunday might immediately be Gedalia's fast-turned feast. Remember, there's supposed to be a feast in the seventh month. Where are you going to fit it? God promises in Zechariah 8, right before it talks about people going to Jerusalem, he promises that the feasts of the 7th, 10th, 4th, and 5th months will be kept. They're fasts. They become feasts. The, the perfect time to have that would be day one of the feast. Give them a feast, all right, immediately after the last great day, which is a, a day so special to God, it's almost like God does not, want to, does not want to use it 
any more than he wants to use the other seven. That's a fascinating thing to think about. It sure looks like the first day. If not, well, then you got only about eight days left to do it. Seven days after, after that. After the feast is over, there's eight days. If, if God doesn't use the seventh or the first day after, then there's only a week later to fit in Gedalia's fast, which is normally on the third day of Tishri, two days after trumpets, but that's too late. So it, it, it might be the most natural time to have everybody come up the immediate day after the last great day. The Bible talks so many, many times about people on the 24th. God won't name the date. He won't name the date. 21st and 24th, it looks like it's the 23rd. 382 or 83 days is 23 days too many. 23 days longer than any year for the rest of eternity. All years for the rest of eternity will be 360 days. If God goes from 383 to 382, I thought about this, then it, he's still 22 days longer than any, any other year that will ever exist again into infinity. Found so doing, as I mentioned earlier, still applies here. Speaks of me, particularly the, 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 the steward. Uh, speaks of me and everybody else. He still will be found so doing on the eighth day. Now, some may argue, humanly, I'm using the term facetiously or rhetorically, uh, argue, uh, some would say, I just can't believe it would happen during services. Well, that's beyond dispute. That's simply beyond dispute. If at the very end of the Feast of Tabernacles in Jerusalem, seven hours east of us is when this happens, whatever day it would have been, that's going to be in services here. And it's only referring to where he is. So that, that you can't argue. You could argue that it's next year, we wait a hundred years, but you can't argue with seven hours west of Jerusalem is during services here. Whether it's a day when we have one service like today, uh, or two services like we would on Sabbath. That, that's inarguable. You have to accept that. What I never knew for years is whether it was during the Feast of Tabernacles or the last great day for that matter. How was he found so doing? I didn't understand it. But if he's rushing to give meat in due season three times and he's found doing that, he's still at the feast. There's no arguing with that now, but it just wasn't easy to see. In very technical agreement with the, the last point, we might just say, in time zones, John 7 has Christ speaking late on the last great day and saying anybody wants to come and take water freely. As though most of even that day, and certainly the whole feast, is over. Elijah would speak late on the last great day, typing what Christ did. Half the world would still be in it. You can't argue with that unless you went to all the way to the 24th. And someone's going to say, is there any way that could be true? I don't know. I, get, you, I suppose but I don't think so. Now, a fascinating thing I want to come back to. 11 years ago, um, almost exactly 11 years ago, I started studying God feeds the poor of the flock for one month and then cuts off three shepherds in one month. I started studying that, could never pin it down. It, I got onto this early yesterday morning and late the night before I came back around I'd been playing with God picks these staffs up it makes no sense that he would pick up grace and bands you know 12 months into the kingdom with a month to go what is that month what is that month what is that month sometimes I thought it was a kingdom uh, but other times I know it's at the end of the year it matches the you know the great tribulation but it just the description of it never really did. It would not sit well. What is the month? And Zechariah 11, 7, and 8 called a, a Yerach, not a Kodesh, but it would be about 30 days. And I went back and I started looking at the things that I've been covering, uh, but going back about 30 days. <clears throat> and on September 7th, which would be exactly 30 days uh, before the 23rd, exactly 30 days to this point where three people are put to death 
And I can give you 10 verses that say the saints alive on earth today who fell away died day one. They don't drift on through the kingdom for a year. So there are three shepherds who die initially, and they're, they're famous people, we'll say. The three shepherds who abhorred God. So, so I, I battled with that. Battle, I battled with it for 11 years, but recently I've been trying to think about it, and I just fell out of my thinking. So counting uh, today, we've had eight messages in the last 30 days, and those are the days, those are the messages where I've largely cleared up the mystery of God, made everything plain, went back to the subject of branches and the messenger of the covenant and the size of God and his wings and all the things that flowed off of that, where God described this month where all he did is talk to a poor of the flock. You know, the people who'd sold all, who were walking in truth, apparently still at the feast, their loins girded, they had guarded God's word, were waiting for Christ, which is what Zechariah 11 says. And there's a group in Revelation 3 that describes that you've guarded my word, you've guarded the word of my patience, you've not denied my name, and I will guard you in the year ahead, in effect. So there's a group that waited. Right through the last great day, they did the will of God, they waited. So that's a powerful one month, 30 day guide. That 30 days could never be replicated next year or any future year. I could not come next year or five years from now and replicate those 30 days. I finally am clear at the very end on the point that God started my wife and I with at the very beginning battling with. That's, a, that's an 11 year war. What was that month? Including, was it a kingdom? Was Elijah talking to the world for a month? Was it church unity for a month? What in the world was it? It's not God talking to the entire world for a month, after which he cut off Nebuchadnezzar and two other guys we could scare up. But he was just talking and feeding and working with the poor of the flock for a month. And then he started breaking the staffs after that, before he ever got to the end of the year. So, final point, God appears to want to reserve punishment for the extraordinary last great day. And he wants to reserve the great supper for that day. All saints taking the symbols with Jesus Christ on that day. He wants to reserve the wedding for that day. It's almost like if you, if you cheapened it by opening the year with this extraordinary day when God would be glorified, you did a kind of a low level type of it in a disobedient world. He wants to remove the veil in that day. He wants to bring mass conversion to everybody and pour his spirit on everybody in that day. He's anointed as the most high himself in that day. He wants to keep the feast of wine on the lees in that day. And I, I the, men, the men around me know I've wondered, would God really want a world filled with what it says three at three places is lying disobedience. Is that really what he would want? Lying disobedience on the last great day? And I concluded, no, he would not. He would not. The new heavens, new earth, new Jerusalem, all of that is reserved for the last great day. Would God really want the world to keep a type of that. No, the saints, yes, for thousands of years, but the world, no. It was not a natural thing, but I couldn't tell. I was trying to be true blue to the end of the feast as the end of the year, the end of the seven days, trying to be true blue to it's, it's an acceptable year, though it's a year, but it did say, and this haunted me, there's a delay. Though it delay, most delays are about a day long. Wait for it. And finally, I'll just say, I truly rushed today, certainly again, not having planned to speak. I know you know that. I mean, I didn't, I didn't contrive all of this. My typist will tell you, I prepared this message entirely upstairs, and I missed the sermon. All of it. I didn't have a note written down until it all came together at home this morning. So now we wait a really tiny, tiny micron. So 20 minute message, 25, whatever it is. We wait two days, not three from two days ago. <laughs> 
till tomorrow, but two days from today, and even that's more accurate. So enjoy the dance tonight, and all the rest of the brethren, enjoy the feast, and if you were thinking of leaving, change your mind and stay. Godspeed the day.